I got asked so much, when are you guys getting married questions? What do you miss the most about New York City? What are your top three for healthy relationships and how do you get past rough patches? So I think it's time to finally talk about this. Um, what is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Natalie. Today I have for you an updated Q&A slash life updates basically answering a couple of your questions i feel like i have such a long time that i don't sit down and actually chat with you guys so i ended up posting a q a tab on my instagram if you guys aren't following me on instagram what are you doing definitely follow me there i feel like i update you guys there the most but i'm going to get the question tab now i actually haven't looked at it at all <laughs> Um, I normally like screenshot some of the questions that I want to answer just like the ones that are repeated or frequently asked um, I tend to like stick to those but it's gonna be a surprise for you and for me all right got the questions so without further ado let's jump right into the video all right so first question is how do you like living in white plains I personally love it here I feel like I've answered this before in a few other videos I will be linking like my frequently questions and answers down below in case I've answered some of those questions already but I really love White Plains. I love living here. I love the fact that even though it's still outside of the city, it feels like the city to me just because it is like downtown White Plains. And then like the windows and nature truly gives it more of like a suburbs vibe, even though this is like a luxury building. So when we moved here, it always felt like we were in a hotel, like walking into a hotel because it felt so luxury. But now it feels like home and we love, love, love our building and our apartment. I've shared some of the cute things that our building does for us. Like last week, Day did like a movie on the lawn, which was super cool. It was kind of like a drive through movie theater, but not really. I've always wanted to do that. So it was a movie theater on the lawn and it was super cute. But overall, I love it. I love the mixture of the city and still like outside of the city vibe and having nature near and being able to walk. Um, I love the restaurants around here as well, but Overall, 10 out of 10, highly recommend if you guys want to move out of the city. White Plains is a place to move, I feel. What do you miss the most about New York City, which is kind of like related? Honestly, what I miss the most is like the actual city vibes. Every time I go there, I'm like, oh, I miss living here and I miss being so close to it and just being able to experience the New York City life, which I truly love. Um, but as I get older, I just appreciate living outside of the city more. But what I miss the most is definitely the restaurants and like new buildings and activities that happen in the city throughout the year. Um, I haven't been to many of the new buildings out there like the Edge or the Little Island. Um, a few places that I really want to go, I haven't been, but definitely on my to-do list. Are you vaccinated? So I actually took a bit to decide to get vaccinated, but I'm fully vaccinated now. I got Pfizer. Um, Eric got vaccinated like early January because, you know, he works in hospitals and stuff, but I took a really long time. So I got vaccinated end of June, beginning of July was my second vaccine. And yeah, I'm vaccinated. I honestly don't want to speak too much about it because I feel like it's such a controversial topic, especially now that they're like truly mandating it in the city. But what I do have to say is I personally believe that everyone has their own decision to make and this shouldn't be a forced thing. Like, I don't know. I said that I wasn't going to get into it, but I am. I just feel like everyone should have their own opinion about it and everyone should make their own decision for their own bodies rather than being forced to do so. That's just my opinion about it. But the answer to that question is yes, I'm vaccinated. And for side effects, in case you guys were wondering, the first shot, I didn't feel anything. I just felt like my, my arm was sore the next day. The second shot, I was totally fine the first day. The next day, my arm was sore when I woke up. Woke up totally fine. And then at 12, it was like downhill from there. So I basically slept a lot. I felt sick. Like I felt like my body was like feeling heavy and sick. Um, but that was pretty much my symptoms, just feeling sick and sleepy, so I slept a lot. And then the next day I felt totally normal, like my arm barely hurt. It got really dark real quick, so we're going to brighten this up. <laughs> my outfit is like washing me out with the bed. I always decide to wear white when I'm filming. 
Are you still going for your license? So, yes, I am. After launching Not The Label, it truly has taken me so long to just like sign up for classes, but Eric has been giving me classes here and there and I feel more confident to like actually go into some classes to get my proper license. But I got my permit at the beginning of June and I am now hoping to get my license perhaps by September, like the end of September. Fingers crossed. Have you and Eric discussed marriage at all? Not sure how long your relationship has been. So Eric and I have three years and a half by now. And ever since we started dating, like marriage was definitely, we spoke about it. We spoke about our stance. We spoke about how we feel about it. So it's something that we both would like in the future. I got asked so much, when are you guys getting married questions? And honestly, not to be rude or anything, but I feel like that's not a question to ask a woman because at the end of the day, it is not a question that a woman asks. How hard was it to start your business from one to 10? I would have to say to start it, a solid 6.5. I feel like a lot of people go with the wrong mentality when starting a small business, thinking that it's going to be super successful right when they launch, that it's going to be profitable. Um, just like, you know, not necessarily a realistic mindset. It, there is so much work that goes behind like that first launch or that one product there's just so much that goes truly behind it that not a lot of people notice and recognize so when someone prices let's say their product it's mostly not just necessarily how much the product costs them to make there's just a lot more that goes behind the pricing alone let's say for example but yeah i feel like that's definitely one of the misconceptions that a lot of people think and assume um for someone that has started a small business or that is wanting to start a small business so definitely go with a realistic mentality not pessimistic just realistic i would also say that you have to be really stern and just passionate about what you're doing and what you're launching because there's going to be a lot of moments that you're going to just be doubtful about it all. But on the bright side, it's really rewarding to have your own business and be an entrepreneur. So I would say go for it and don't give up. Have you considered breast augmentation? Honestly, I would lie if I would say no. When I was 15 through like 17, that was all I thought about. I was like, once I turn 18, I am going to get my breasts done and I'm going to feel more beautiful and more like a woman. Once I turned 17, 18, I still wanted to get my boobs done. So as you guys know, I've been vocal about this. I have a video, really old video, which I won't link, but if you want to search it, you can. Um, it's about my nose jobs. The lighting in this video is truly stressing me out. Like it's sunny and cloudy and blue tone and yellow tone, but I'm not going to talk about it anymore. I am just going to say, I'm sorry that the lighting just keeps, you know, jumping and getting sunny one second. Like right now, you see this? Where am I? Call me Casper, that's all I know. Back to plastic surgery. So again, I talked about this before in another video, like more in depth, but when I was 17, I did miss the Medicare Republic and one of the prices was to get something done, right? And for me, there was no question about it. I wanted to get my boobs done, but um, my pageant director like, you know, recommended and said that it was better if I got my nose done and that was honestly something that I never truly felt insecure about. Like I didn't look at myself in the mirror and I was like, yes, that's the one thing I don't like about myself. I didn't like my height. I didn't like my weight at the time. It was just many different things that I didn't like about myself, but my nose was never one of them. Long story short, I ended up getting my nose done, obviously, and that's all I've gotten done and I don't think I'll get my boobs done unless like I have 20 kids and then I have to get my boobs done, you know? Did you ever work another job while doing YouTube? If so, how did you juggle both? So before YouTube, I worked at a party planner company and basically just hosted for different parties. Could be bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, weddings, you know, just big parties overall. Um, mostly like Jewish families. It was a fun job looking back at it now. I did it with my friend Joancy, so it was fun that we did it together, but it was not like a fun job. Um, overall, just juggling both, I, you know, always made time to film videos for YouTube and the way that I would do it was just like film one day and film like three different videos that one day and then edit the next. Um, and that was a really good way for me to balance it out. I don't know how I did it because now it takes me forever to film one video, so. Yeah. Your past management issue, what happened? All right, 
I think it's time to finally talk about this. I mentioned briefly on one of my questions and answers, like one of the hardest times in my life. I answered a question once on Instagram that someone asked me like when you were going through a really hard time and no one knew and I posted a photo during that time. Basically, my previous management um, stole money from me, like thousands of dollars. And I, it was like a whole ordeal. It was definitely one of the hardest times for me in many aspects. Like I trusted that manager blindly, clearly, um, that I let that happen in a way because I feel like I definitely let that happen. Um, you just have to be more careful with your money. You just cannot be trusting everyone in this industry. I mean, in any industry, you know, overall, you shouldn't blindly trust people, which is sad in a way because I personally, liked that person as a friend and I treated her as a friend but yeah um, I basically lost thousands of dollars a lot of money but because the person didn't live in the States it made it really hard and overall it was so draining mentally emotionally and also I was just like spending money on this lawyer that either it was going to take m multiple years to get that money back and still be giving that situation my energy that I just decided to F it and not stress it anymore forget that money and just keep moving forward so that's what I did I ended up just forgetting about it forget the money and keep moving forward and thankfully God has been great and has provided me many more amazing people in my life and amazing partnerships I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason because Right after that situation happened, I got one of my most amazing partnerships of my life, which was the Estee Lauder like shoot, and that was just like such a blessing for me. So, yeah. How old are you? I am 27. Yes, a little old, if I would do say so myself. Do you have any advice for people who are starting to use dating apps? Ah. <sighs> Honestly, I feel like I don't just because I was never one of those people that liked dating apps or like dating online I tried it a lot before dating Eric like I tried it three years before so I met Eric 2018 and I basically tried online dating three for three years you guys don't know we met online we met on Bumble um, and I tried dating apps before him, but I just never got a good experience with them. A lot of the times on those dating apps, I feel like people aren't there for the right reasons or they're just there for a good time, you know? Uh, but I was personally looking for something serious. I was looking for a relationship. I never liked the whole like, hey sexy, hey beautiful type of conversations or having to continuously make the same exact conversation with so many different people got boring and tiring for me so I would give up really easily. The last time that I did it when I met Eric, I went on it with a different mentality than I'd done it prior because my issue was always that I was only dating one person at a time. And on those dating apps, you know, it's normal to go get and get to know multiple people at the same time, but I've just never been that girl to be able, I don't know, to remember so many different facts and points about each individual person, it's really a lot. But this last time I went with the mentality of like, you know what, I'm just going to have fun. I'm 24, how old was I? I was 24 or 25, I don't remember. But I was like, I'm just gonna have fun. I'm going to go on a bunch of dates and just like have fun. So I go on the app and I'm started swiping and I match with Eric right away. And then I remember I messaged like I think two other guys, but nothing came about it. But I matched with Eric and I felt like we just connected right away. And fast forward to now, three years and a half, and I feel like it's been the best three years of my life. So I would recommend dating apps. It's just you have to go with the mentality that it's going to be draining, that it's going to be... Just like, you know, you'll meet a couple douchebags, but you can also find your Prince Charming or perfect guy. When did you learn how to knit and knew you enjoyed knitting? So I actually crochet, not knit. Knit is with like two sticks and crochet is just with one. I know how to do both, but I personally prefer crocheting because I find it more therapeutic. Like knitting stresses me out. Knitting stresses me out so much. I love knitted items. Like I like how they look, but I just cannot. Uh, I learned when I was 13, I went more in depth on my brand reveal video that I talked about it. So yeah, if you want to go and check it out, 
I'll link it down below. So this one is in Spanish. I'm going to translate it. It's a little, it's a little personal, but I wish Eric was here because he would, he would answer this question in such a funny way. If you're my mom and you're watching, please stop. Mami, por favor, para de, para de ver el video. ¿Cuánto tiempo tenían de novios cuando tuvieron por primera vez? How long were you guys dating when you blanked for the first time, basically? So all I'm going to say is, um, I made Eric wait 10 dates. Yo hice que le esperara 10 citas para que... I mean, maybe it doesn't sound like a lot, but I went away for, to the R for a whole month during when we started dating. So like, imagine that plus the other dates. So yeah, I made him wait like 10 months and it was a lot for him, apparently. But I was, I was just like so tired of dating around that I was like, no. I'm not, I'm gonna wait. What do you use to take and edit your photos? I get this question so much, so I'm going to answer it here. I do want to make an updated how I edit my photos video because I basically use less apps than I did when I filmed it. Um, but all I use now, honestly, for the most part, is just Visco, which is V-S-C-O. The filters that I like to use are A4, M5, um, I also like AL3, and like a couple more but for the most part I use M5 and A4 the most and then I just add some grain um, I used to use Facetune a lot I'm not gonna lie and I've shared it on that video that I that I mentioned I might link it down below it's really old um, but I used to use Facetune a lot I barely ever use it now just because it just doesn't make you feel good you guys it truly m makes you feel worse um, especially looking back at photos and then you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like that's not even me um, so I barely use that anymore I do have it though um, I also use retouch retouch I love because it I just delete people I delete people I delete trash I delete gum from the photos I, if I don't want that lamp in my photo I'll delete it <laughs> um, but yeah retouch is that app it's like a dollar or two and it's totally worth it and I also use Snapseed. Snapseed is giving me a hard time lately where I, I can't save it to my phone. I have to text it to myself to then save it. I don't know but I love that app as well to um, brighten up certain areas. Like if I want to darken this side I can on that app without ruining this side if that makes sense. Long story short I'll do a dedicated video on how I edit my photos but for the most part that's what I use and to take pictures I just use my phone to be honest anything that's on not the label though I do like to use my camera which is what I'm filming on and it is the Canon 80D how do you divide and Eric divide the chores home responsibilities and cooking for the most part everything is 50 50 which I feel so blessed and thankful for and honestly sometimes he does even more <laughs> because like for example he likes cooking more than I do so he cooks for the most part and then he also likes to clean the kitchen so I let him you know I'm not gonna say no but yeah he does like cooking and cleaning and also helps me with laundry but I just prefer to do laundry myself and clean the rest of the apartment um, and just like everything is pretty 50 50 with us which I love and the joke of it all is when I was growing up I remember my family you know especially my mom telling me you're never going to find someone if you don't learn how to cook. Tú tienes que aprender a cocinar porque si no ningún hombre te va a querer. Well, look at me now, mom. Look at me now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, I was like that kid that didn't want to learn how to cook growing up. I just, I, it was not a calling for me. After I moved, I, I started learning how to cook more and more, but it's still not my favorite thing to do. I do it because I have to, but... You know, it's not my favorite thing to do. I think I'm going to end with this one. What are your top three for healthy relationships and how do you get past rough patches? Woo! Um, honestly, this is the issue. All right, so obviously on social media, everything looks so perfect, but no relationship, no relationship is perfect. And everyone goes through rough patches. Everyone has like their learning curves and how to live together or work together. So definitely I feel that the top three tips I would say is number one, communication. That is something that I personally struggled a lot, especially at the beginning of the relationship. Just like overall, not just like with him, but with anyone in my life, like it could be girlfriends. I feel like I have a really hard time communicating my feelings vocally. So that is tip number one. 
um, that I've like learned throughout the years of us dating. By the way, Eric is my first like official real relationship. I've shared this before. Um, the second tip is patience. Um, learn that you guys are not exactly the same person. You guys were not brought up the same, you may not have the same beliefs, same upbringings. So you guys are two different individuals and at the end of the day is trying to find a balance within your beliefs and decisions in life. I feel like patience and respect both describe what I'm trying to say right now, which would be my third tip. Just like respect each other, don't forget that at the end of the day you love each other and you guys are trying to build a family together. It's not like a competition on who's right and who's wrong. Um, trying to always respect each other's decisions and opinions and try to listen as well. Um, those would be my top three advice or tips. Alright my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and got to learn a little bit more about me. Enjoyed this little chit chat moment. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your constant love and support. I appreciate and love you so much. Hope you all have an amazing day and see you next time. Bye!